One of the reasons I decided to run for office is because I am a regular person. It might not seem like it as a drag queen, as a trans person, but I am an everyday person and I'm looking out for everyday people. I want to use this platform to be able to do good, and drag, I think, has a history of doing that. Oh, you sent your vote in. Awesome. I will continue to make the calls, knock on the doors, do the work that needs to be done. Drag really prepared me to have that grit. I just voted for myself. <laughs> This is LGBTQ Nation's authentic voices of pride. And in this episode, we're following drag queens as they're taking their activism to a different kind of stage. This makes complete sense to me that a drag queen would be seen in the political sphere because it's what we do. They're taking their voices and their activism from our safe spaces and going into culture at large. And what that shows our youth is that by embracing who you are, you can flourish and you can shine. It's so important that there are points of access and entry for people to find themselves and see themselves. It's kind of the first time I ever rode the train in drag. And I remember getting on the train and like everyone stopped to like, and I remember thinking to myself, oh my God, I have all the attention. I better say something important. I have the power to command attention. And I think that we are motivators, we are cheerleaders, we are inspiration, we are thought provokers, we are community builders. And not just the drag queens, but like lots of queer people. I don't think that being a drag queen qualifies you to run for office. But at the same time, it also doesn't disqualify you. If a drag person is qualified to be a politician, and they can serve their constituents well, then they have every right to be a politician and their community deserves them. My name is Maybe a Girl, and I am a Silver Lake Neighborhood Councilwoman, drag queen, and congressional candidate. We as a neighborhood council can vote either in support or opposition of whatever city council is putting through. We're making decisions on behalf of all of our neighbors who collectively make up this great city of LA. When I decided to run for office, I assumed that I would just have to give my legal name, but they also allow you to choose what name you want on the ballot. Many more people in my community know me as maybe a girl, so I decided to run under my drag persona. I remember the one and only time I had to lip sync for my life, doing a little prayer and being like, God, universe, I really want this, but if there are other things that I could be doing to better be of service, then I'm okay with going home. I guess. The prayer worked. I'm Honey Mahogany. I currently work as a legislative aide to Supervisor Matt Haney, working at City Hall every day. But in my spare time, I am the chair of the San Francisco Democratic Party. These bodies actually create the platforms for the Democratic parties. A lot of what we do here in California then translates into the national platform. My name is Honey and I'm calling from the California as someone who was on RuPaul's Drag Race, I want to use this platform to be able to do good. Vote for me. I'm Marty Cummings, and I am a drag artist who recently ran for city council. So many people were like, oh, how is a drag queen going to run for office? So much of drag is about community building and community organizing. Drag artists are the first people you call in the queer community to raise money. That's why we were the top fundraiser in my race. Why did you decide to run for office? I think more drag artists are running for office because they recognize that as queer gig workers, we're often left out of the equation. Gig workers are often not offered access to childcare, paid sick leave, paid time off. Our district has been dealing specifically with issues of housing and security for a long time. San Francisco was starting to become really unaffordable for people to live here. So many of the people, the artists, the drag queens, the LGBT community were being pushed out. Unfortunately, there has been a lot of gentrification. I think that this is a, a pretty common occurrence. As an elected official, you are a representative of the constituents that elected you. And you should be in touch with the everyday situations that those people are in touch with. A uh, neighborhood council person here in Silver Lake is a volunteer position, so don't get paid for that. So I do need some other coins to supplement my income, so I work as a server. I am a full-time drag performer. It didn't feel like a costume. It felt like just a, a natural expression of myself. I 
came to realize that I was a, a trans person through doing drag. We are just trying to live our lives like everybody else. If there is no trans person in Congress to explain that to the rest of the House, to the rest of our government, if there's no representation for your marginalized group within a governing body, how can we trust that that governing body is going to be looking out for your best interests? When you have a bunch of people voting on queer things, there's no queer people there to represent the voices and speak up and say, well, this is actually what it's like to actually be a queer person. It's really easy to um, villainize people when you, when, they're, when you don't see them around. Representation matters when you see yourself, you find value in yourself. It, it feels nice to know there's someone who has shared experiences to you working in politics. We didn't win the election, but I don't think that means our campaign was unsuccessful. There were so many wins within it. Next time, I hope other trans and non-binary people win. I would do it again, win or lose in a heartbeat. I am a drag queen, but drag is what I do. Trans is who I am. The fact that people voted for me as I am was so touching to me, and it made me realize, well, if I can do this on a local level, why can't I do this on a larger level? When I thought about it, there had never been a single trans person in Congress ever. And so I decided to run because we need trans representation in Congress. We lost the primary election by less than 1%. Our rookie campaign in a first time election was able to come that close that we said we have to do this again. For me, I want to be the first trans person in Congress, but if I'm not, that's okay because I know that I'm helping to pave the path for the first trans person in Congress. Making history is, uh, it's an interesting thing because, I mean, I think it's hard. I think that there is a lot on your shoulders when you're first. If it's never been done before, then people don't believe that it can be done, I guess. I celebrate those achievements, but I think also when you come from a disenfranchised community and other people have already been doing this work, it's just like, well, it's about time, right? We are now standing in the Transgender Cultural District, the very first of its kind in the world. We wanted to slow the tide of displacement. We wanted to make sure that we were fighting for our community and working to actively improve conditions through our budgeting process. I think if people want to get involved in politics, they should just do it. The advice I would give to another drag artist who wants to run for office is do it. My advice to somebody who wants to run for office is to just go out there and do it. I mean, when I run for office, I'm 35. I'm young. I'm finally eligible to be the president of the United States of America. Maybe one day I would run for political office. Right now, I don't know if I'm fully cut out to do it. <laughs> Activism comes in many different shapes and sizes. It is the person marching. I like to use my social media to influence people to, to become critical thinkers and active participants in making their, the world a better place. Voting is really important because of the disenfranchised people who aren't allowed to vote. So trying to get my fans excited about um, the voting process. And it is the person giving their dollars. I was exposed to the great element of drag which was charity fundraising. We also need people to be working inside the system as well. It, it all works together. Whenever you have an audience, whenever you have a group of people listening and paying attention to what you are doing and saying, that's an opportunity to inspire people to become engaged. Drag queens are visible. I think that we are used to speaking our minds. Drag queens have this sort of platform. I think it's our duty to use that to do good. Please consider donating right now to Black Queer Town Hall, and Chevy will match donations up to $25,000.